Hey guys, welcome back. I am so excited to share with you this Gerder Steiner stamp set Moody Unicorns and it's going to be a trifold card so let's get started. I'm using this My Favorite Things um, Clouds stencil here as well as my Picket Fence blending brush and some Distress inks. The Distress inks that I'm using today are Spun Sugar, Shabby Shutters, Shaded Lilac and Tumble Glass. And what I want to do here is I want to create this kind of whimsical cloud, rainbow cloud background. And I'm bringing in my Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station here. This will allow me to hold that stencil down on top of the cardstock uh, so that when I'm doing the ink blending, I don't have to have my fingers kind of all over the cardstock or smudging the ink. And it's just a lot easier uh, to do the ink blending for me. Uh, this Wendy Vecchi station here is actually really good as well when you are working with projects and you don't want them to kind of like get lost on your desk or uh, flutter away. I sometimes have a fan on or I have kids or animals that kind of breeze past my craft desk and it just helps me kind of keep my project in place when I'm working. So I highly recommend that. And I'll link to all the products that I use on my blog. So go ahead and click on over there and you can check it out. So as you can see here, I'm just going ahead and using my blending brush and I'm adding that sponge sugar to the top and blending a nice layer of that Distress ink over top there to give me the outline of that cloud image. So what I can do after I've got this one blended up, I'm going to move on to my next color. You can clean this brush off just with a microfiber cloth. You don't have to go to any other extreme measures and it won't transfer any of that previous ink you used onto your project. So you can see there that I've got that nice cloud outline. I'm going to turn that stencil and just give it a quick wipe here as I did have some Distress ink still on there. And I'm putting that magnetic ruler back on. Uh, again, this is a really great ruler as it has that um, center zero mark so you can find the center of your cardstock quite easily. All right, so the next color that I am using here, I believe, is the, hmm, 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 what is this one? This is the shaded lilac, I believe. And so I'm just leaving a little bit of that white cardstock peering out through between where I am laying the ink down. So I don't want to fill in completely. I do want to have some white kind of peeking through, and that will help define the edges of the clouds a bit better. So once I've done that, again, I'm just going to wipe that extra ink off my stencil and give it another turn. Apply that magnetic ruler back down just to hold down the uh, stencil there. And the next color I am using is the Tumble Glass. And I'm going to go ahead and just rub that onto my picket fence brush. Now again these brushes are really good. They're nice and lightweight. They blend the color very smoothly and that's what I was kind of going here for. Sometimes when you're using that um, felt ink pad, that round one with the wood handle, it uh, can leave that circle mark and, and that kind of bothers me on some of my images. So this one is really nice that it doesn't leave that um, inked circle. So you don't have to worry about starting necessarily off your cardstock um, which is really nice. All right, we're going to go ahead and add this last color here, and that is the Shabby Shutters. It's that green toned ink. And I chose this color just because it was, you know, closer to the ground because, of course, I'm trying to set my scene here. And uh, it'll, you know, kind of bring in that feeling of, of the ground. And you'll see here later on that I add some grass elements to this card. So I think I mentioned before this is a trifold card. So this is actually going to be the center portion of our card. The card will actually open um, to the left like a normal card and then there will be another piece that opens up towards the right and then this is going to be in the center. So there you see we've got all the the ink blending done and I'm actually going to set this aside so that the ink has some time to set up. So here's our two cards. Here's the kind of the premise of the trifold card. That'll be in the middle and then we can open up these two pieces. So I'm going to take that right hand piece of cardstock, turn it over, and we're actually going to be die cutting on that left hand folding piece. Now this is the, um, what is this, the Meadow, Meadows border die set from Lawn Fawn. And there's two great um, kind of sizes of these grass pieces. There are other grass pieces from Lawn Fawn. 
and I'll link to those as well on my blog. I believe it's the Grassy Hillside Border um, is the other ink, or uh, sorry, other dye that um, you can use. So this is partial die cutting I'm doing here, and I'm doing that with my Gemini Junior. And so you're just gonna place the plate just kind of where that crease is. Just, you're only laying the plate on top of where you want cut. So you can see that I've done that here. Now, what I should have done is before I cut this, I really should have done my ink blending. And uh, that way I don't bend any of those little grass pieces. And you'll see that I kind of realize it, that here. Um, I'm just trying to line up to figure out how much, how far down I want that second die cut to be. And uh, that way, because I also want to, of course, have a sentiment on both those pieces. So you'll see me here, I get all set up to, uh, you know, cut this out and then I'm like, you know, I should really, I should really distress ink this first. It'll make my life a lot easier. So I bring in the colors that I want. Now I do have, a, a, I think it's the forest moss I pulled out there, but I actually don't end up using that one. Uh, the colors for the grass that I'm going to be using is the mowed lawn and the pine needles. Now I do apologize. There is that kind of um, sunlight in the background. It's that time of day where the sun is actually shining through the window behind me and it's kind of casting that ray of light. So I do apologize if that's obscuring anything that you're watching here. Um, it should go, go away quite quickly as the, the sun was setting. So here I am bringing in that um, felt or that wood ink blending because I don't mind the texture being on the grass. That'll actually add some dimension and interest to the grass portion of this card. So um, those little circle images, it doesn't bother me here because it, again, it adds that texture. So as you can see, I've ink blended that. Now I'm going to reapply that um, die cut here and I'm using my purple thermo tape to um, just kind of keep that die in place as I run that through my die cutting machine. Um, that purple tape is really great because it is a, a light adhesive and that adhesive won't actually rip your card stock which is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that back here now that I've die cut that and you can see um, I've ink blended just enough there. I'll bring in my Fiskars trimmer now and what I want to do is I want to cut off that excess top portion of um, that side of the card. There is a little wire um, kind of gauge in there that shows me exactly where this trimmer is going to cut, which I really, really like. And you can see that piece there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in that other piece. I'll cut up the top portion, but now I'm going to have to go ahead and do that ink blending, which I'll have to be really careful that I don't um, bend those little grass pieces. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this uh, stray cardstock there and you can see how those will fit together. Now I'm going to bring in that pine needles color here of that distress ink. I, I discovered there that that uh, forest moss was just going to be too dark so I'll bring in the, the pine needles and again doing some ink blending here being very very careful that I don't bend those little uh, spindly grass pieces. So I'm going to bring in that ruler again just to hold my cardstock piece in place as I work the ink onto the cardstock. I love the modeling effect that it's getting here with that um, with this type of brush. Um, again this one this uh, brush, blending brush, is um, good for more textured and if you're not really concerned about having uh, your color smooth and if you want a smooth color, that's where you use your picket fence blending brushes. All right, so I've got that all inked up and again, just doing some little bit of trimming here as there was a stray piece of cardstock and getting that all set. And now I can get my card pieces adhered. It was just one piece that was really bugging me here, so I had to had to fix it. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and bring in that cloud panel again, and I want to adhere this down onto the back of that cardstock. Um, just using a mono sand eraser there, I had a little bit of ink that I got where I didn't want, and that just took it off nicely. So I'll adhere this uh, cloud panel down with just my uh, tape runner here. All right, and I'm just kind of getting this lined up. I'm, I have a problem lately here with my tape runners that I seem to be running out of tape, so I need to really stock up. Now, I do a really silly thing here with my panel. I go to place it down, and then I'm like, no, I'm just gonna put that down and get rid of this little thing of ink on the bottom. And what did I go and do? Like a total 
brain moment there. I ended up gluing it down to my Wendy Vecchi um, station, but I managed to pull it up quite easily and um, it's okay. I can go ahead and adhere that down to the panel where it's supposed to be stuck to, not my work surface. So the important thing that you need to do here actually is we're going to bring in the trimmer again and we're trimming off just a, like a hair off the edge here, just so that when you put these two panels together, that it lines up nicely. I'm just doing a little bit more trimming here to get um, a stray piece off that I had. It didn't, didn't line up perfectly, so I wanted to fix that quickly here. And then uh, I can bring in that left hand panel. And then again, you can see how that's going to fold together to create our seam. And I'm just cleaning my surface off, making sure I don't have any stray um, ink anywhere. And then again, I'm just bringing back in. This is where I run out of my adhesive. Like, I don't know what it is. I have like so many <laughs> tape runners, but all of them are running out at the same time. It's, it's very sad. But I'll apply just enough here to make sure that it gets um, stuck down. And then lining that up. And you want to make sure that your little flap on the left there is going to fold over nicely. You don't want to um, impede on that little crease there. And I did a tiny bit, so I'll just kind of work that um, fold a little bit with my finger. You can work it with a bone folder. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do my stamping. I love these Gerda Steiner stamps. They are so cute. Look at that. How old are you? Are you kidding me? Surprised? Seriously? So this, this set is just so much fun, and I have so many ideas that I want to do with it. But um, I'm, I'll go ahead here and just kind of stamp out. Actually, I'll stamp out um, two images of each because I do have an idea um, of what I want to do for another card. But I'll save that for another video. So because these are new stamps, I'm just actually kind of priming them with the with my fingertips there, the oils that are on my hands, just so that um, the ink can stick a little better to them. And uh, again, I'm, I'm gonna stamp out uh, two copies here. And so this is the Spectrum paper, and I'm using this um, type of cardstocker paper because I'm going to be doing the Copic coloring on it, and it's just such a really nice smooth surface, and the Copics um, just kind of really blend nicely on top of that. Again, like I said, I'm doing Copic, so I will be using that Memento Black Tuxedo ink because it is Copic friendly. There are other inks out there that are Copic friendly, um, so you can, you know, by all means use those, but this Memento one seems to work great for me. Um, if you're doing watercolors, uh, you'll want to use a different uh, type of ink. So again, I'll just flip this over so that I can go ahead and stamp that image a second time. Uh, sometimes I like actually to stamp these images several times just in case I'm coloring and I don't like the colors I use or I make a mistake. I already have it stamped and ready to go. Um, if not, if I you know like the colors that I use, I can just go ahead and save those stamped images for next time. It's kind of a, a bit of a time saver. I can you know take them with me and color them on the go um, when I'm you know out and about with with family or if we're watching a movie. I can still kind of be crafting. I, I don't like to sit still so. Um, as you can see here, I've got my little images all colored up. Head on over to the blog there to catch what Copic colors I've used for that. Um, I'm just applying down here some of the um, em embossing buddy or the, the kind of the talc and I'm going to be stamping down this seriously. And that'll be the first sentiment that you see on the card. And this is my Stamp Perfect. Uh, this is a really great size, I find, um, for when I'm doing sentiments. And I'll stamp that down. I'm using that Versa Claire. Um, that's my favorite sentiment ink. Now, I didn't really ha actually have to use the, um, the embossing powder. I'm not embossing, but I just kind of wanted to make sure that um, the ink, the Distress ink, was kind of dry there before I started moving my hands around on it. The next sentiment we are going to be using is still from the same set and it is it says seriously did you really think I'd forget and this is actually going um, to my girlfriend's daughter I thought it was cute I just saw her she had an early birthday because of her birthdays in the summertime and she wanted all her friends there so um, yeah, I went over and helped with her birthday and then I'm sending this to her in the mail um, just so that she knows that I didn't actually forget when her real birthday was I'll go ahead and get that set up. Again, I'm using um, my Stamp Perfect here and I'll use that VersaClaire ink, that Nocturne ink. 
and just treating it with this embossing buddy here. I, again, I'm not doing any heat embossing, so I don't have to do that, but um, I just wanted to make sure I'm not smudging anything with the uh, Distress ink there. And then now that I've got that all set, I'm going to stamp the image or my sentiment in the middle. And I'm using this Hero Arts um, set here. It's the Snarky, oh, what is that one? That is the Snarky Mix and Match Sentiment stamp set from Hero Arts. I really love this big, bold, happy birthday, and I wanted it to be in black. And uh, I just, I, I thought it was a, f a funny way to say that. So it'll be, seriously, did you really think I'd forget happy birthday? So again, stamp your, or ink up your stamp there and apply it down. Now, I, you don't have to stamp this one twice. Usually it does it great in, in the first shot, but uh, I think I just, for safety sakes, I think I, I gave it another hit here with the ink. No, I didn't. I just, it was perfect. Yay! <laughs> so I could go ahead and clean my, my stamp off there. And then I can start adhering my, um, oh, I have to add, a, of course, Wink of Stella. I have to add some glitter to this happy birthday just so it looks, uh, stands out, out a little better. And what girl doesn't like a little glitter? And I'll also use that Wink of Stella on the hair, the rainbow hair of the unicorns as well. And this uh, Wink of Stella, there's all sorts of types of glitter pens that you can use out there, but this seems to be my favorite. Um, that Wink of Stella comes in the clear, which I'm using right now, the silver, and the gold as well. I think they have a special set that comes out around Christmas time that has um, some great kind of, you know, Christmas colors like the reds and the greens. So check those out. Uh, check for those. They should be coming out soon if they're not out already. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get our little unicorns glued on to our image. And I'm going to be using my reverse tweezers here just so I can keep my fingers out of the uh, liquid adhesive that I'm using. So I applied that one little guy down onto that middle back panel. And then this little guy with the cheesy grin, I like him. He's he or she. She's so cute. And uh, again, I'm just using my, uh, what did he say? This is the Gina K Connect. Now, when I first purchased these, they were really great. I really loved them. Um, but all of a sudden, they seem to be clogging up on me more. And I'm not sure if that's just because I haven't maybe used them in a while. I tend to store them so that they're upside down, um, you know, hoping to not keep the air um, in the nozzle and keeping the glue in there, but it, it just seemed to have clogged up on me So I did have to take a pin to it and and unclog it there Okay, now I can go ahead and adhere that last little guy down Had to add a little bit more of that adhesive And then you can see how cute this card is when it's all finished. So let's we'll start off here. It says seriously Did you think I'd really forget? Happy birthday, and then you can write your sentiment on the right. We'll take a look at these panels separately. There's the front with the little guy peeking out behind there, and there he is with his cheesy grin, and then that big, bold happy birthday sentiment. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. Please make sure you like and perhaps share it with one of your crafty friends. Until next time, guys, have a wonderful day.